in the event of Anakin losing the pod race, we probably expect that somehow Qui-Gon still would have gotten Anakin to come with him because he believed so strongly that he could be the chosen one according to the prophecy. But I think that's the easy way out and we're not doing that shit. So we all know how the story went. Anakin tapped into the force a little bit and won his pod race, winning his freedom and him eventually going to the Jedi and so on and so forth. But what if he didn't win that race? Qui-Gon, Obi-Wan, and Padme would probably be sticking around for a little bit longer, talking to Watto and still getting to know Anakin as they discuss how Watto can collect his payment. Throughout that time, Qui-Gon would be talking to Anakin, telling him more about the Jedi and some of the abilities that Anakin might not be able to explain. And he would tell him how important he believes Anakin is. The problem is that Watto would overhear that. Darth Maul still would have been sent to Tatooine to track down Padme, Qui-Gon, and Obi-Wan. Because Obi-Wan, Qui-Gon, and Padme had to stay on Tatooine a little bit longer, they probably would have fought with Darth Maul. Eventually, somewhat ordering their bet, Qui-Gon, Padme, and Obi-Wan would have left Tatooine. And remember, at this point, Obi-Wan still hadn't met Anakin. The only people that really knew what Anakin looked like were Qui-Gon and Padme. Watto would have been upset that he didn't get to collect on the debt that was owed to him, but Darth Maul would have interrogated Watto, knowing good and well that they were there. During that interrogation, Watto probably would have told Darth Maul everything he knew that Qui-Gon told Anakin, especially how special he is in how he's very sensitive to the force. Darth Maul would probably report this to Palpatine and Palpatine would order him to bring Anakin to him. And Watto likely would have traded Anakin for his life. Eventually everything would have led to Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan fighting Darth Maul again and Qui-Gon dying kind of the same way. But not before Maul got to bring Anakin back to his master. Palpatine would have started raising Anakin in secret training him in the dark side of the force. You know, and that obviously changes pretty much everything about Star Wars. Palpatine would have given Anakin everything he wanted as he raised him so that he could bring him closer and make him feel very safe. As the beginning of the Clone Wars came up, Palpatine would start using Anakin as a spy to spy on the Jedi Order and stay a couple steps ahead of them. There, obviously, he would have still fallen for Padme because he would have seen her again. And Anakin probably would have been infiltrating as just a normal person who Palpatine had hired as maybe like a bodyguard. Obviously, the Council still wouldn't trust him. And then eventually, Palpatine would find a way for the Clone Wars to start. He would continue to use Dooku as a pawn, but I think in the end, he would have survived. That brings up the question of another character like Ahsoka. Well, I just think that Ahsoka would have become Obi-Wan's Padawan. So whenever it comes to Episode 3, that is one of the most pivotal points in all of of Star Wars. Palpatine using Anakin just to get the Jedi Council to trust him a little bit more would have given him the intel of where Grievous was so he could take it to the Jedi Council to bring the war to a close. The Council would have again sent Obi-Wan and probably Ahsoka to go fight Grievous. Hello there. While on their way, Chancellor Palpatine probably would have been kidnapped again by Dooku. When word of this reaches the Jedi Council, Anakin pretends to be shocked and eventually convinces them that himself should go along to rescue him since he's his most trusted bodyguard with people like Master Yoda and maybe Master Windu. Anakin would accompany Windu and Yoda as they go to try save Palpatine from Dooku's clutches. But when they get there, Anakin turns on them in the right moment and Anakin, Palpatine, and Dooku take out two of the most important Jedi to ever live. Then the Jedi Order would have basically no leaders and the execution of Order 66 would immediately follow their deaths. During the execution of Order 66, Palpatine would have likely had one of their assassins, like maybe a Sajj Ventress or whoever they had at the time, to go kill Anakin's mother. He would start planting that seed of pure hatred for the Jedi. And this is likely because he could sense a little bit of conflict because of Padme's beliefs. He would send their assassin dressed as a Jedi to kill his mother and have it recorded. So that way it looks like a Jedi that just killed his mother once they learned his true identity. That recording would serve two purposes. One of them to fully commit Anakin to the dark side and the idea that the Jedi are evil, but also convince Padme that the Jedi had actually turned on everyone. After Order 66 had happened, Palpatine would likely go to the Senate and tell them how the Jedi had turned and started to crumple the Republic. Because of the traitors within and how weak they were, it was time to come to an agreement with the Separatists to end the war. Dooku would eventually become a Grand Admiral and lead his military like he had always wanted and had planned to. There would be a certain point where Dooku would reach a power level that Palpatine would view him as a rival and probably kill him. Anakin would have also been there for the birth of his children, where in that moment he would have spotted an opportunity to take the throne from Palpatine in the future. Then he could have everything he always wanted, which was to rule the galaxy with his family. Now obviously, just like canon, there would be survivors from Order 66. But the person that would have the most influence on this story, specifically, 
I think it's Cal Kestis. Obi-Wan and Ahsoka surviving Order 66 as well would eventually find Cal who was saving Jedi. Together they would go out searching for survivors and take them to Tantalor which he eventually found in the second video game. Tantalor is honestly kind of like the Jedi's version of Exegol. I think the original trilogy would then follow the Skywalker family as they try to figure out where Tantalor is and officially destroy the Jedi. I think the way the Skywalkers would eventually find Tantalor is by using Luke who the galaxy doesn't know about him or Leia. They would use Luke who would be planted somewhere to live alone and pretend to be a Jedi, where eventually they would find him and take him to Tantalor to train. During Luke's time there, he would probably learn a lot more about the light side and the Jedi. He would eventually also develop relationships with a lot of the Jedi there. Whenever Luke finally grows extremely fond of a lot of the Jedi that are there, he would contact his father to tell them how misled they had been by Palpatine. Whenever he contacts his father, they would use all their equipment to actually pinpoint their location and figure out how to get there. Then obviously Anakin and Leia would have to report to Palpatine that they now know where Tantalor is, and uh, they would kill him in that moment. Once they take control of the galaxy, they send the entire might of the Empire after the remaining Jedi that have been slowly building up over the years in Tantalor. To Anakin and Leia's surprise, Luke would be fighting with the Jedi against the Empire. In the end, most of the Jedi would probably be destroyed, but Luke, Obi-Wan, and Cal would probably escape with their lives to go start forming a rebellion across the galaxy. Anakin realizing he just lost his son to the light side of the Force, he would order the Death Star to destroy Tantalor. Using the imagery of an entire planet being destroyed by the Empire, Luke, Obi-Wan, and Cal would be able to go across the galaxy and recruit people for a new rebellion. Also after this event, Padme would start having her doubts again. Also after this event, Luke would try to talk to his mother Padme in secret to let her know that they've been misled this entire time. Padme being the most compassionate one of all the Skywalkers who would truly love her children, would talk to Anakin to get him to calm down and actually look into things. Whenever they finally took a moment and stepped away from their hate and their anger for the Jedi, they would look into the files that Palpatine had kept and then they would realize that they had been manipulated by Palpatine their entire lives. They would likely find recordings or records of Palpatine ordering for the assassination of his mother. And then the most interesting thing setting up the sequels is that they would find records of Exegol and Palpatine working with the Kaminoans to make the perfect clone. With all this new information, Anakin, Leia, and Padme would probably make some type of arrangement with Luke and the Jedi to take down Palpatine and eventually relinquish their control over the galaxy. They would all realize that Palpatine is the real threat. The most likely thing that would have happened was that some of the higher up officers in the Empire would have left to go to Exegol where Palpatine would be secretly rebuilding his army to destroy the Skywalkers. And I think the chief officer in that whole situation would be Grand Admiral Thrawn. The sequels would have become a very collective war effort to destroy the Sith and destroy Palpatine. By the end of the sequels, Anakin and his children probably would have destroyed Palpatine and the army he had been building with the help of the Jedi. And this still holds true to the prophecy that Anakin is the chosen one because he would be the one to destroy the Sith. Once the force was in balance and everything was settled, Padme would definitely have Anakin relinquish his control back to the Senate and become a Democratic Republic again. Cal Kestis, with the help of Luke Skywalker, would go on to rebuild the Jedi Order. Leia Skywalker would eventually join that Order and learn under her brother and Cal about the light side of the Force, which would be a huge adjustment for her since she's grew up under the dark side of the Force. And then Anakin would have the ending that we all wish he could have had. He would have just lived with Padme in peace. Now again, I know this would have probably didn't go the way you thought it would because I didn't want to take the easy way out and just say, oh, he still would have went with Qui-Gon somehow. No, I think we can be a little more creative than that. If you did enjoy this video, make sure you let me know in the comments below because I love making these types of things and gets my creative juices flowing. Mm -mm. Also, if you have any other what if videos that you would like to see done in this style, please let me know in the comments. Make sure you subscribe if you love Star Wars and you want content every single day. Also, make sure you start looking at my community tab. Share this channel with any Star Wars fan you know, and I appreciate you for watching. May the force be with you.